This sermon was downloaded from spiritnerds.org. We equip Christians with thousands of strategic spiritual materials daily. Join millions of Christians around the world who have come to Spirit Nerds to learn about God and His Word today. Let's welcome Apostle Agoma Osai. If you watch me this evening, my my leg is trembling. Some of the my most respected ministers of the gospel, the world over, are present in this place tonight. I trust God for grace. Amen. Thank you again for the opportunity to stand here. Amen. In the place of prayer, before I came for the conference, the Lord told me while I was waiting that he had set up this platform as a springboard for announcement. So when you said that, yes, a springboard for announcement, uh, that when he raises a nursery at the backside of the wilderness, he will need to come to Wafbeck for for announcement. I speak in parables. Amen. Thank you again. Now, uh, I was trying to find uh, the mind of God for this evening because uh, the other subjects I was considering before this time became weak. <laughs> and uh, so the possibility of continuation does not exist. <laughs> so he said I should send a warning to the body of Christ, beware of Bela. Let us pray. Father, tonight it is obvious that you are stirring something in the body because something is about to be born in the land. And the civilization of our nation is about to come into conformity with that which you are crystallizing on mountains like this. Grant me the grace to speak in simple plain language as Jesus would have done if you were physically present teaching us. And by all means take the glory in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Please you may be seated. Turn your Bible to the book of uh, Joshua. He said, beware of Balaam. Balaam is a metaphor that is used to point the people of God to uh, a certain strategy of the kingdom of darkness that has the capacity to turn us against God himself. And if you are diligent, you will find out that the idea of a prophet is a spokesman. Someone that provides vocal facility to the frequencies of a spirit being. In Exodus chapter 7 verse 1, we see the concept of a prophet. And the Lord said unto Moses, see, I have made the a God unto Pharaoh and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. So the perspective of a prophet in scriptures is one that can give vocal expressions to the transmissions of God. So the designation of a prophet is to bring vocal expression. And in the Bible, there are three kinds of prophets. And we want to consider the first kind that is in the category of Balaam, the prophet of Baal. 
Now listen. Because the image of the beast in recent times, if you, I speak in parables, the image of the beast in recent times that has been erected not too long ago, that will begin to determine the shape of our age is bad. You know, I said I speak in parables. Details, if you have an ear, you will hear. So first we have prophets of Baal. These are prophets that use divination. Divination. So someone that uses divination, the product of divination is what we call soothsayings. And according to the book of Joshua chapter 13 verse 22, which is the first scripture that I draw our attention to, you will see that Balaam's designation was adequately identified in the book of Joshua chapter 13. Balaam, also the son of Beor, the soothsayer, did the children of Israel slay with the sword among them that were slain by them. So his designation is captured in this scripture. He is seen as a soothsayer. You see, we need to know the difference between a soothsayer and a prophet because a soothsayer has the capacity to reveal your name it can reveal your grandfather's name it can reveal the color of your singlet it can reveal the name of your village but that doesn't make him a prophet what <laughs> what makes a prophet is that he has the capacity to reveal the things of god the name of your village is not part of the things of god Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. So, uh, Balaam is a soothsayer, and soothsaying is one of the capabilities of Baal. Soothsaying is manifested in modern, modern context, maybe as astrology, as horoscopy, as palm reading, crystal gazing. The use of the Uji board, enchanted cards, and hexagrams. Those are a few. Oh, I wish I had time to open up some of the. They are similar. Uh, yeah, well, let me let me leave that. But you see, it happens to be that the body of Christ is ignorant of some of these operations, and that is why we have recognized some people as prophets that have obvious marks of soothsaying. And if we do not clarify these things, it will be difficult because the move of God is going to be triggered on a higher pedestal of glory this year. And what God does is that, what the devil does is that he is a master imitator. And the closest relative to prophecy and the prophetic is divination and soothsaying. So if we do not have basic discernment, to be able to capture these matters and to decipher them, we might be bowing down to a God that Apostle Paul does not know. And so we need to go to the book of Acts chapter 16 quickly. Beginning from 16 to 18, we see a classical example of the manifestation of Sutsin. Then we'll draw a table. We'll put Sutsin this way. We'll put prophecy this way then we'll we'll fill it up as the case may be if you are still with me say amen, amen. somewhere along, along the line if time permits then we'll look at how to judge a prophetic person because i have five tests here that we need to conduct um hallelujah <laughs> And it came to pass as we went to prayer. You will be amazed that whereas a witch might be afraid of prayer, someone operating with the spirit of divination likes prayer. We run into prayer. Because it's in that religious atmosphere of prayer that their manifestation can be taken to be something that is divine. So the context, oh, mm, I don't want to tell stories today. Yes, please, don't take the scripture away. Just leave it for me, okay? And it came to pass as we went to prayer, 
a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying and it came to the same followed us and Paul and us and cried saying these men are the servants of the most high God that show unto us the way of salvation and this did she many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of her. And he came out of her the same hour. Now listen. It doesn't matter how you want to interpret the scripture that I just read. The truth of the matter is that for many days, Paul the apostle was deceived. It means that the manifestation of soothsaying, in fact, if you are a student of, a theological student, and you did the course introduction to prophecy, there is no way you can say that that utterance doesn't match prophecy, biblically. It means that there are some context of discernment that you cannot achieve by Bible discernment. Because there is a difference between truth and true. God will help us in the name of Jesus. That's the highest level of discernment. To know the difference between truth and true. Because the statement this lady was making under the influence of the spirit of divination was true. But it happens to be that many days later when the spirit of truth which was in Apostle Paul awoke. In his ability to decipher and to discern. That was when Paul entered into, a, into the economy of discernment. That was able to make him identify that an evil spirit was at work. If a man like Apostle Paul could be deceived for days. And it, it has not occurred to you. Are you with me? I speak in parables. I speak in parables. It has not occurred to you. That even big men of God can endorse someone that is a soothsayer. And they did it with utmost sincerity. Because the power that drives revelation, which is discernment, was not available. There are several levels of discernment and the first, which is the primary level, is the Bible. But let's, let's leave that for now. Let's go to our table. Are you with me? Balaam, the metaphor. We need to look at the counsel of Balaam, the way of Balaam, the error of Balaam, and the doctrine of Balaam. Because God spoke to me clearly. He said, beware of what? Of Balaam. So let us make that chart. All right? He put suit saying, no, prophecy on one side, you put suit saying on the other. Or put prophet, prophet on one side, and then put diviner on the other side. So if a prophet should speak an utterance, because we have seen that a prophet is a mouthpiece. So if a prophet should speak an utterance, uh, we can call that utterance prophesying under the influence of the Holy Spirit. If someone that has the spirit of divination should speak an utterance under the influence of the spirit of divination, it is soothsaying. Now, because of time, we cannot go into the details of the shape of prophecy and the shape, the limitation of soothsaying. You see, the, Satan can predict only the aspect of the future that he himself will create. So, if Satan wants to speak about the future, witches have already been deployed and based on the framework of justice, judgment, and equity, there is adequate trespass in the context that gives them the authority to be able to create that future before witches begin to prophesy it. Are you with me? So, we'll not go into that. Those, those are areas of study, okay? The difference between prophecy and soothsaying, and the limitation of the utterance of the diviner. Number two, 
The prophet speaks from the belly of the personality called the truth. In the book of First John chapter 5, um, Apostle John begins to bring us understanding because among all the apostles that Jesus had, the functionary that had the greatest density of the prophetic grace happens to be Apostle John. So when you are reading his writings, his writings are prophetic writings. In, for instance, every miracle that was done in the book of John is prophetic. Uh, you must have known that the book of John is a book of life. It's the study and the expression and the manifestation of the divine life. That's what that book is about. The book of Matthew is the book of the kingdom. The book of Mark is the book that reveals that Jesus was a slave. That the content that he came to manifest upon the face of the earth was already written. He was not called to be creative. He was not called to be innovative. He was called to fulfill that which was written in the volume of the books. The books have restricted him before he showed up. So he needs to accept the capacity of a slave in order for him to fulfill the mandate of God that was written concerning him. The book of Luke is a book of the universal grace of God. And the name that Jesus has in the book of Luke is Son of Man. It's a name that is representative. It, it, it is like House of Rep, Son of Man. Because the things that Jesus is doing, he's doing it on behalf of the human race. But the book of John is a book of life. It talks about the very life form that is responsible for the dynamics of the life and the ministry of Jesus. Are you still with me? Now, John gave us 18 manifestations in the book of John that revealed the divinity of Jesus. Because the book was about studying the capabilities of Zoe. You still with me? In that book of John, there were a few times that Jesus had the opportunity to define himself, define who he was. And in one of those times he said, I am the way, I am the truth. I am the... It is in that context that we see that truth is not just a statement of fact. Truth is a person. And it's a person of truth. As the Holy Ghost that was able to reveal the treachery that was involved in the operation of soothsaying. There is a difference between truth and true. So a soothsayer will speak true. Things that are verifiable in the natural. And you will know that it is accurate. But beyond true, there is something called truth. It is the nature of our God. Uh, so the nature of God had to come to the rescue in that particular situation. That even though this utterance is true, it did not come from me. Because Satan can quote the scriptures too. So the second thing on the list is the prophet speaks true. The soothsayer speaks truth. The prophet speaks truth. The soothsayer speaks what? True. Number three. The prophet can operate in hiding. He can be an intercessor that is hidden behind the scene and he doesn't want to be known. And maybe he will never be known till death. But the soothsayer must operate in lamplight. And the reason why the soothsayer must operate in lamplight is because he needs to get the endorsement of spiritual authority in order for him to be pedestaled in a position where he can sway the congregation or sway the nation, as the case may be. So the profit that the soothsayer intends to gain can only be so gained if there is a display close to spiritual authority. The full capacity of the soothsayer will never be actualized except he has the endorsement of spiritual leadership. The same said to Paul and us, these are the servants of the Most High God 
that show us the way to salvation. The same said to Paul. I can imagine how that prophetic service was. And when there was a little quiet in the room, then the lady stood up and pointed Paul. It was as if she was helping his ministry. People that had doubts about Paul's ministry, their souls were confirmed the moment the utterance came up. It is because of the element of truth that is in the deliverables of the soothsayer that men's souls are trapped in her bondage. Please help me tell your neighbor we need to go beyond truth. Number four, the security of the prophet is the Holy Spirit. But the security of the soothsayer is a cartel. I speak in parables. I speak in parables. <laughs> it's a cartel. The moment that lady was checked, the cartel that backed her up. Was and a lot of prophets have remained in the cave because of the fear of the cartel. Yes, Satan does not just launch. He provides security insurance policies to guard his manifestations in every generation. So the confidence that the soothsayer had, even though she was a little girl, was that there was a cartel behind her. And the day you try to compromise her, then just, just get ready for prison. Because a long network of, of people will rise up on the account. That's why the life of a... The Lord will help us. That is all I can say about it. <laughs> the security of a soothsayer. Yes. I've seen it in my city. There are a league of pastors that are into Diabolical immorality. Diabolical. It doesn't make sense anymore. This is not somebody falling into sin. I mean a diabolical dimension of immorality. And there, there's a league, a strong league. And the moment the lady comes out and say, there was something like this. Those men will fight the lady and quell her into silence. There is always a cartel built. When Satan wants to make gains in a generation through falsehood, he does it through the power of a cartel. But you know what? The time the die is already cast. Before we hit mid-year 2023, you will begin to see the downfall of secret cartels that have been built to extend the shelf life of deception in the body of Christ in this nation. He said, Beware of Bela. In the book of Numbers, chapter 31, verse 16, we see that Balaam was consulted. And he gave the enemies of Israel a counsel on how to discomfit Israel. Hallelujah. And if you check and investigate the counsel that Balaam gave, you will see that it was the basis upon, of, upon which Israel committed trespass against the Lord. That means they violated his commandments. And the implication was that they lost their covering. And that which the presence of God shielded them from, they became exposed to because of the counsel of Bila. Oh, man of God, you that is rising in the grace of God, rising in the anointing. When Satan begins to take inventory of your possibilities and your capability to do damage and to bring injury to his kingdom, he takes counsel. And this counsel that is taken is to bring you to a point where you lose the covering that God has placed over your life. It is needful for you to know that if Satan is planning on your behalf, you also need to plan. 
You need to plan extensively. You need to wake up every month and say, okay, if Satan wants to tackle me, what are the areas? Yes. Oh, okay. You don't like my presentation. Let me leave you to think about that. <laughs> so, Balaam started with a counsel. Then that counsel that Balaam gave became a way. So, if you want to do ministry now, there are ways, there are options on how to do it. You can do it the way Balaam did it. And the thing about the way of Balaam, the Bible spoke about it. In the book of Second Peter chapter 2 verse 15. Which have forsaken the right way and have gone astray following the way of Balaam. And the Bible gave us insight into the way of Balaam. He, he said that way was propelled by wages of unrighteousness. If by any means you come to that point. Are you with me? Ah, I forgot to show you something. Oh. The objective of the prophet is the service of God. And the objective of one that operates by the spirit of divination is gain. I forgot to read that. It's gain. So the way of Balaam is the way of gain. Over and above the service of God. You know the Bible says that God will never do anything except he reveals it to his servants, the prophets. The, the designation of these prophets is that they are in active service. Not just any prophet. The one that is in active service. So the motivation of a true prophetic person is to offer himself to become relevant to serve the will of God. But the motivation of a soothsayer is gain. So he doesn't care what God thinks about. He doesn't care the mind of God concerning the matter. Uh, his drive is about gain. And he is not the one that pioneered that part. It's called the way of Bela. Are you with me? Then we have the error of Bela. So a counsel became a way and eventually became an error. And finally, in the book of Revelation, it became a doctrine. In Jude chapter 1 verse 11, we see the error of Balaam. What is the error of Balaam? He said, woe unto them, for they have gone the way of Cain. That's not my emphasis. And ran greedily after the error of Balaam. You see, there is a greed component that satisfies the example of Cain. Of, of, of what? Of Balaam. Run greedily. Run greedily. A time will come when you become a man that knows how to use the sword. That Satan himself will come to bribe you. I just finished preaching in Aberdeen and I came to Heathrow to take my flight. Uh, because I was tired, I had to stay in a hotel in Heathrow so that I can take the flight the next evening. London. Uh, Buja, it's a night flight. So I, 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 I finished prayed, and my wife put one hymn, one hymn sound, so that I will sleep in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and for the first time in my life, I saw Satan in my dream. And he came to me to plead with me that I need your help. Now, the Satan I saw did not have horns. He was the most beautiful creature. I mean beautiful, not handsome. The most beautiful creature I've ever seen before. And trust me, I've seen all kinds of angels. The beauty I saw, he was radiating. And you know what? He was self-controlled to an extent that I did not expect. He doesn't stammer. He's so fluid. In his speech. Huh. If you are not 100% submitted to Jesus, you will follow him. Oh, he's, he's good. So I need your help. Say my help. Then he told me the project that he was putting up in England. Now he needs my help to finish it. 
So I said, but are you not aware I'm called to destroy that project? He said, that's why I came. We don't need to fight. We can. Then I woke up, he's myself, I came back again. When I slept, I was there again. This time he had gold. He had about 2,000 cards that looked like ATM cards. I said, these are access cards. They can lead me to nations, to kings. I will have influence throughout my lifetime. And this gold is enough money that is too much for me to spend in one lifetime. Then he brought another thing that he didn't tell me what it was. It was like a crystal ball. One roundish thing that was like the moon. I was the one that was angry. He was. So I woke up. In the morning, I called my wife and said, Satan came home. <laughs> we went down, had breakfast, we came back again, I slept again, and I was he was there again. This so it was not about when I slept. Somebody was okay, it's a product of stress. Ah, I had slept. In the morning, he showed up again three times. Then I studied the Bible to see every time that Satan negotiated with people what was the object of the negotiation when pharaoh was negotiating with moses what was it about when the kings of sodom came to negotiate with abraham what was it about when when he came to negotiate with jesus in the wilderness what was the subject he said they have gone greedily in the way of Bela. have you been negotiated out of destiny and the, the, what you are calling breakthrough are the spoils of compromise that you have drawn from this spirit. My sword will not fight on Satan's side. And finally, in Revelation chapter 2 verse 14, he speaks about the doctrine of Balaam. It was the doctrine of Balaam that taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel. That's number one. A stumbling block. So you can go and study because we don't have time. And to eat things sacrificed to idols, that is a mixture. And to commit fornication. I'll stop there. So what began as counsel became a way, eventually became an error, and then it became a doctrine. To test a prophet, we need to engage five tests. One is the Bible test. That's the basic test. You can use the Bible to test your prophecy, but you cannot use your prophecy to test the Bible. No matter how anointed any one of us becomes, your utterance will not have as much authority as the Bible. So we'll still use the Bible to test it. If it's within the framework of truth. The second test is the fruit test. People that sit under this prophet, what do they become? Do they become lascivious people taken by immorality? It means the substance of what is being released as ministry is, is fornication. That's why that is the... Forget about the lingo. It, what does it produce? So we need to check the fruit test. Because the Bible says by their fruit... He said them. There is a them there. So if we check the product of what that kind of operation produces, then we can know what sort it is. We also have the spirit test, which is the inner discernment. And the inner witness, the inner testimony of the Holy Spirit. And I tell you, that has been my escape route till this day. Something will not just be right inside. I can miss every other way. But this one, it won't just be right. And there's a way it can be, I will not be able to sleep. I said, ah, what is happening? Why are you offended? Then he will show me a sign. Sometimes, you know, I wanted to be ministerially right, so I accepted an invitation without checking. And by the time we arrived, I knew I was in the wrong place. I had to leave. I had to leave because I, I realized the way God was shaking inside of me, I can even die on that pulpit. So there's no need to be ministerially correct. 
Baba is not involved. So I want to be at peace with God, even though the whole world turns against me. So I had to walk away. And for two years, I was castigated as a devil. But the Holy Ghost inside of me rejoiced. <laughs> Kobe la is a mm. Then we have the character-based tests. You can't tell me that you are a prophetic person and on ground you are a liar. A liar that needs God to touch his tongue. You know, Isaiah was a liar. He said, I'm a man of unclean lips. My problem is my mouth. I have been able to keep breathe all other parts of, of my entity, but my lips can go out of line. And the reason is because I'm a, a man that dwells among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the Lord. In order to commission him for, min, for ministry, what God did was that he sent a seraph. And this seraph, as mighty as it was, with six wings, and it only needed two for flight. This seraph came and the coal of fire that was used to purge Isaiah, he could not take that coal with his hand. It had to use an instrument to show you how terrible that fire was. That a seraph could not take it. He used an instrument, he put it on the man's tongue and cleansed him and prepared him for prophetic ministry. There are people that need the seraph to visit they are not fit for prophetic ministry. I, there's a man like that I met. He, he lies with grace. It in flow. He just flows. He doesn't meditate on it. He comes out. And then I saw him on the big bump. He does say the Lord. Ah. No. The reason why I don't, I can't recall what he said because I didn't hear it. I zipped my heart instantly. If a generation comes where we do not believe that character is necessary, we are we have been sold into darkness. I want to stop here because I want us to pray. He said, "Beware." Of Balaam. That in the rise of the move of God that has already been activated, the ground has been prepared for it. Many soothsayers will stand in your way and we speak in the name of God. And so we need to go beyond true and to enter into the very economy of truth. We need to depend on the witness that only the Spirit of God can give. The Bible says, That no man know it. The things of man. Save the spirit of man which is in him. Even so know it no man. The things of God. Save the spirit of God. So the only one that knows the things of God. Happens to be the spirit of God. The things of God are calibrated on the spirit of God. And the economy in the New Testament, the spiritual economy that we operate in the New Testament is what we call the economy of the mingled spirit. According to the book of First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 17, when the Bible says that if any man be joined to the Lord, he is one spirit with him. The meaning of that is when God moves in your spirit, you can't tell experientially if it's your spirit that moved or if it's God that moved. Because there is an intertwining economy that makes your spirit one with God. And your spirit therefore has a capacity to experience and to float into the layers of the things of God. It is only by the things of God that we can disarm the, em the enemy in this time. Oh, it is time to mount up with wings like eagles. You cannot contend with serpents on the ground. Scorpions will take on you on the ground. So we need wings to take a flight to where God is so that we can transmit from his dimension. It is only in that, that from that realm that we can find the safety that we need to navigate through these times. In a moment, I'd like us to pray. the 
clarity, clarity test. Listen to me, we've been on the ground for too long. These are the days where we mount up with wings like the eagles. If you see from the perspective of God, some of the things we celebrate, you will cast them. We pray for heightened discernment in the body of Christ. So that we will not celebrate people that need to be quarantined to and admitted into the intensive care of the grace of God so that they will be restored. Take us on the flight, oh Holy Ghost. We don't want to see from the ground. We want to see from your layer. Cause us to gain ascendancy. Because in these days, we need your witness. That is something beyond true that our spirits must align with. Help us tonight. That our witness will be like that of John the Baptist. A born in and a shining light. Such as can expose and discomfit the enemy. Cause the least among us to become as strong as David. We call upon your name. We call upon your name. Give us the capacity to say no to the rewards of unrighteousness. So that the order of priesthood that you want to crystallize in Nigeria will begin to emerge. If you fix your house, you can fix our nation. If you fix your house, you can fix the land. We mount up tonight to the place from whence you transmit. Oh, help us. Help us. Help us. Help us. Help us. Help us. Help us, Father. Help us, Lord. It is your intention to restructure ministries, to restructure our approaches, and to bring us to a point where we can wield the scepter that you have released. Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion. An everlasting joy shall be upon their heads they shall proclaim gladness and joy and sorrow and mourning shall flee away take us on a flight prepare us to take our journey prepare our ears to hear one gross things that will make them tingle such things that eyes have not seen that ears have not heard, that has not even occurred to the heart of man, the things that you are set to do to them that love you, not to them that you love, but to them that love you. We love you, Lord. Come on, say it again, Mahaya. Broske suse kantel. Amantos kivo la bukatwa abama kate suke bama ilatai. Moria siko babo santeli. In the name of Jesus. When the priest after the order of Melchizedek came to visit the church in Laodicea, there was a prescription he gave them. 
He said, you need to wash your eyes with eyes self so that you might see. Because your vista of sight, if it is defective, all of your parameters are in error. I don't want to walk in darkness. I want my eyes to see. Oh my. Can we take, take delivery of eyes self tonight? So that our parameters, our vista can become accurate. We deep our eyes into eyes self. So that our sight, our vision, our vista will be healed. That we will see by the Holy Ghost. Dearly beloved, we believe you've been greatly blessed by this sermon. Visit spiritnerds.org to download more MP3 sermons of your favorite preachers. Reach us by email for more information and concerns at spiritnerds.org at gmail.com.